This video is sponsored by Upstart. Doesn't look like it ever stops, does it? It's pretty. But it's also <laughs> a little sketchy. What am I supposed to do with this? <sighs> All right. Well, I got some work to do. Hey everybody, Syntax 77 here, and by here, I mean the great state of New Hampshire. I'm about a mile away from a trailhead, got three days off, it's the beginning of June, gonna do some hammock camping and some backpacking. That's my lovely dog, Denali, and my lovely wife, Sarah. <laughs> you may have seen them in the videos before, but unfortunately... <clears throat> I'm staying. Yeah, Sarah and Denali have to work. So, Does Denali have to work? Um, do. I don't know what he does <laughs> but I'm going solo on this one so I'm gonna say goodbye to them hop out of the humble abode here and uh, gotta walk to the trailhead don't have a vehicle other than what I'm standing in with me so that'll add a little mileage but we'll get into the details of that later All right. I guess I should put the pack on <laughs> there it is I'll put that on going pretty much ultralight although the temp range is it's 65 right now it's probably as high as it's going to get i got some rain gear because yeah of course there's rain and some extra layers because it's going down into probably mid to high 30s at night but here we go all right uh, it is 10 30 but uh a.m obviously <laughs> but clarification a little overcast do you usually leave at 10 30 p.m yeah here at the what is it the timber timberland timberland lake campground i didn't always like your speed so yeah here we go sarah will be comfortable in that i'll be comfortable in the pack <laughs> all right i love you love you This here is Route 2, just outside of Gorham, New Hampshire. I'm headed to a trailhead called the Rattle River Trail up ahead here. It's going to get me onto the Carter Mariah Range. We'll do a loop. Should be roughly 30 miles, 9,000 feet of elevation gain over the course of the next three days. About 3,000 feet of gross gain per day or so. Little sprinkle of rain already. Seems to be just a sprinkle for now. And so hopefully if it stays like that, once I get to this trailhead and into the trees, maybe it'll pass without soaking me. A couple more feet. And we're off the road and into the woods. Rattle River, right there. Appalachian Trail. You can go up towards the Mahoosics this way on the other side of the river. Not that river, but the uh, Andrew Scoggin River, if I said that correctly. But we're going this way towards Part of Mariah and Wild River Wilderness, a place that I have not been for many years, and I've never done this particular trail. So let's see what we got. Don't need a permit to camp in White Mountain National Forest. There are some rules and regs, pretty simple stuff, like not camping right on the trail, water sources, stuff like that. Most areas you can camp legally anywhere you want. But the flip side of that is once you start getting up in elevation, it can be tough to find a spot that's not too, uh, rugged or dense with vegetation to actually set up uh, definitely not a tent and even tricky for a hammock sometimes so that is something to take into consideration water is as well we're coming from below a thousand feet maybe 800 feet above sea level and the peaks we'll be doing are 4,000 footers 
So we gotta go up to that spot. There's only one decent water source that I see for up there. And that is at something called the Imp Shelter, which is a shelter um, along the Appalachian Trail. There is a caretaker and a $15 fee. It's run by the AMC. I typically like my solitude and avoid that, but that's part of the challenge today. I don't know that I'll be able to find anything suitable and has water um, without going there. So we'll just play that by ear. Nice little footbridge there. Oh, posted. Well, that's weird because I saw on my map this trail as a potential way to end my loop. We're going up there. But this, unfortunately, says private property. Oh, posted no hunting or fishing. Doesn't say no trespassing. So I don't know if there's an, maybe there's an easement through there, but they don't want you hunting or fishing in there. All right, so it is an option. Um, I also see some other ways on the way out that I may play with that put me out on route two by our campground um, from the other direction. But don't have to worry about that for a few days. Where are we going here? Hmm? Hmm, I think it's this. Getting a little muddy. I did stick with my regular non-Gore-Tex uh, Wildcat Trail Runner, so. so my feet will get wet at points, but they do dry kind of quick. Now for the official National Weather Service forecast for northern New Hampshire and western Maine. Rest of today, mostly cloudy with a 20% chance of showers. Highs in the upper 60s. Northeast winds around 10 miles an hour. Tonight, partly cloudy with a 20% chance of showers. All right, hopefully it stays that way. It is midweek, so this shelter hopefully won't be too crowded. I know it's a less used shelter. And speaking of radios, I use this for weather band, but I also have the Appalachian Mountain Club radio frequency programmed in here, if that's accurate maybe i can hear them <laughs> on the way up and see if they're talking about how busy things are or anything interesting like that just some nerdy stuff to do as we hike along trail pretty tame in terms of not too many rocks and not too much elevation gain and it'll be like that for a while and then we're gonna get pretty much all the brutality jammed into the last like a couple miles as we get up towards uh, the range in the shelter. Only doing like seven miles today. It's just the way it works out. It was either that or push really, really far all the way down off the ridge, basically to where I plan to camp um, on the Wild River Trail or around there on uh, the second night so just doesn't make sense i'll do seven today 10 or 12 day two and then the last day a little rough 14 miles plus the road hike but we're definitely going to get some challenge it is some rugged trails around here so don't be deceived by the way it's starting here white mountains doesn't do switchbacks too much it tends to go straight up we're gonna keep following the white blazes for the Appalachian Trail, which is the customary blaze all the way up the East Coast or 2,000 something miles of it. Slippery moss. I was afraid of that. Alright. 
leaving the river behind. <sighs> starting to pick up that elevation now. It's starting to open up a little bit too. And we are fully into the rocks. Stair stepping. And it just doesn't look like there's any end in sight. But I know there is. We're about halfway through the mileage and the elevation gain totals for today and it is right around noon so we're doing good so far but I have a feeling I'm gonna slow down now keep on pushing starting to be able to hear some wind a little change in the uh, feeling in the air that I often notice uh, when you get to the top of these ridges in the White Mountains. Put in about 2,500 feet of elevation gain out of the, is it 3,500 today? That's the bulk of it behind us. The rest of it will get just as we naturally go up and down some of these sections. But man, I am enjoying this flat part right now. Feels pretty amazing. Oh, and there's the intersection right there. Bad. Let's check it out. Right, Carter Mariah Trail. Four and a half miles was route two. Yeah, so five and a half miles we've done. Shelburne Appalachian Trail continues this way. Shelburne Trail. I think you can ultimately take back down to route two. I'm not entirely sure. Don't take my word on that, but we're going this way. Looks like we're walking into some clouds. It is whited out up above me. We might be going right towards that. So who knows what kind of views we're gonna get up here. Oh, here we go. Look at all those clouds over there. Whew. Well, at least they're not right on top of us right now. It is cloudy. Breeze feels good though. Four lakes, go ahead. Sunday, June 5th, you have 31 guests. And on Monday, June 6th, you have 15 guests. Thanks so much. Clear with one over to Six Zealand. All right, so they're going through council and all the huts. Um, I don't know if they do it for the shelters. The huts are like the big ones that hold like a hundred people. Then they cost like a hundred and something dollars to stay in. Um, we're not coming across any of those, but I don't know. I keep listening. It's just kind of fun. Sour Patch Kids Cola, healthy treat. I'm going to recharge and we're under a mile now. So I guess we'll find out who's there with our own eyes. But before we get too far into this adventure, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this video, Upstart. Upstart is an online lending platform that helps people free themselves from high interest debt, whether that be personal expenses, educational, or the granddaddy of them all, high interest credit card debt. They can help you get smarter interest rates to free yourself from that debt. Look, a lot of us have been there. There's no shame in it, but it can be really stressful. You have an unexpected expense come up, you use your credit card to get you through it, but next thing you know, you still have your old bills to pay and you're making minimum payments and that can take forever to pay off and cost you a lot of money in high interest. 
And that is where Upstart comes in. Their personal loans can help you pay down that high interest rate debt all online with simple and easy to understand terms. It's really quick and easy. You can get your rate in a matter of minutes for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. And no, this will not hurt your credit score. In fact, using Upstart to get your finances in order can actually help improve your credit score. And speaking of that, look, Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score. So they actually use AI to give you a smarter rate based on additional factors like your current employment and income and some other information that you'll give them online. Look, if this is something that's stressing you out, this is something worth checking out. You can go to upstart.com slash syntax. Get started today on improving your financial future. It's just worth looking into. And if you want to help out the channel, make sure to use that link down in the video description so they know that Syntax sent you. I can tell you from personal experience, not having credit card debt hanging over your head is an amazing feeling and it is totally achievable. Speaking of achievable, we should probably get back on the trail. Looks like I'm popping out on another little bald spot here. Oh, here we go. Look at those clouds stuck over there. <sighs> Woo, that wind. That is chilly out here. All right. Well, <laughs> I hadn't even thought of this, which is pretty silly, but all those clouds do mean I might be getting hit with another shot of rain. Probably want to get to camp sooner than later, don't I? That reality is sinking in. Look at those clouds just getting funneled into there. Pouring in. No visibility if you're over there right now. That could be me soon. Alright. Got hit with a couple drops just now. wouldn't want to do this when it's wet. Don't think that would be too enjoyable. Oops, almost missed that. Back into the woods. In the mud. Oh wow. And back out of the woods. It's a little cliff. Above those clouds. <sighs> oh, it's like a cool rock field down there. Can barely make it out though. never hiked this section of trail and I've been to the whites a decent amount of times for somebody that lives as far away as I do pretty cool where's the trail go over here <laughs> not that way uh, <laughs> that, that wouldn't be appropriate Careful descent here. Pace is slowing as the terrain changes and the day goes on. It's after four o'clock now, after my little break and whatnot. Right. 
think in fact are actually going to dip down a few hundred feet and then curve around this guy. I think imps out there somewhere around there. Wild River Trail, 5.5 miles that way by taking Mariah Brook. We're not going to do that, but we are eventually going to link up with Wild River. And that's what I'll use to complete my loop on day three. But we're going to take a roundabout way to it. Um, so we are going to Imp Campsite, 0.7 miles. I'm dreaming about dinner, so it's about the right time for me to be hitting this. Final bit of uphill. Entering the forest protection area for Imp Shelter. All right. Please register with caretaker. Weather, not filled out. That's why you bring a radio, I guess. Shelter, I'm here. Caretaker, water, platforms, toilet, bear box. Don't have to hang stuff, great. Oh, this must be the caretaker platform. Guess who's not here? Website says they start after Memorial Day, which was yesterday. Maybe they don't start until the weekend after Memorial Day. And it's Tuesday. I don't know what all that is. I'm not worried about it. We'll see, maybe someone will come by. Sometimes they do that. They might have a ridge runner, somebody in better shape than me that comes by which I'll probably hear on the radio before they do. But, uh, yeah, oh well. I'll go down tent site and take a look around. Oh, there you go. Please pay your 15 bucks right here. Nice lock, like I said. Oh, a ton of money in there too. That's not smart, guys. What are you thinking? Not everybody's as nice as me. <laughs> yeah, doesn't take much to get through paracord. Anyway. Oh, they're redoing this. Wow. That's awesome. And no one else here. Not yet, at least. A lot of work goes into these things. I will definitely admit that. I do appreciate that. What do we got? Just old signs. Looks nice. No way to finagle a hammock in here. Oh wait, there's an eye hook. Nah. I don't think that's gonna work. But I can hang out in here if it rains. That's cool. off stepping back into the light feels pretty good I don't know how it's 540 but it is uh, probably need some water though because I am out of that so let's go get some see what it looks like here it also dawned on me I only brought one cook pot with me to use as a cup and for cooking. So just gonna go mountain house, boil the water, let it rehydrate, have coffee. And if I get hungry again, I can have noodles later. But look at this, real close to camp. Oh, cool. That is 
a steady flow. Oh, look. They even did a little runoff thing here. All right. <sighs> right. Mosquitoes are out in full effect. Put some extra DEET on. It's got the little 100% uh, repel. So, beef stroganoff is the winner. Oil up some water. <sighs> Sunset's like what, 8 ish, 820 or something like that. Um, so, if I'm not careful because we're pushing on 6, um, I'll lose light before I even set up my camp, but it's okay. I'm, uh, I'm just not in the mood yet. I'm gonna get the food started. Then maybe I can poke around and hang up the hammock in a tarp. But food first, or at least boiling water. Did not treat my water. I will, I have tablets if you're wondering why I went directly into the bottle, but I'm gonna boil this, so I'm not worried about it. Soon there will be food. Hopefully not rain. But there will be food. And then, coffee. Which is a little tricky. We'll get into that next. I'll do a fat cup of coffee. It's still hot. Okay. Um, my problem is, I forgot to get instant coffee. So what I have is just regular coffee grinds. So I gotta go cowboy style. Basically, just put coffee in the water, let it settle, tap it a couple times, drink it carefully. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Actually, I just thought about this. It's definitely not gonna work because to do that, you want coarse ground, I think. Uh, yeah, this is drip grind so yeah this is probably a terrible idea but I'm gonna try it <sighs> let's see what I came up with here no coffee grinds in the first sip you just let it settle for a while after it was heating and tapped it. It tastes like coffee. It's strong. But that'll work. So here's what I'm gonna do. I put my food bag as well as my rehydrating meal in the bear bin because I'm gonna walk away from here. I'm gonna bring my pack. We're gonna set up the hammock and the tarp. And I'll come back and hang out and eat here. But at least that'll be set up. There's no way to get it set up in the shelter, which I have done before. If I was going to do that, I would wait till dark just to make sure somebody doesn't show up and I'm like spread out all over. And I would only do it if I could take up a little bit of space, but there's really no exposed rafters or hooks or anything in there I could use. So let's take the coffee, head on over, probably take that last camp spot and um, get ourselves set up here. I'll leave the water here too. Coffee. Let's go do it. You know what? On second thought, I think I'm going to take flight number four here. It's a little closer as I get hit in the head with my ill-placed spot messenger. It's a little closer. I really don't think many people are showing up. And if so, they'll probably take one down at the other end. So this is it. Got my standard hammock kit for um, tougher hikes. My half weight hammock, 10 ounce guy, 30 degree under quilt. And um, uh, 
uh, sorry, 40 degree top quilt. It is going to go into the 30s tonight, I think, but I should be okay. Sorry, you got the sun right in your face there, but that's just the way it is. That's my rain pants. But um, yeah, so I'm just going to work on getting that set up. Showed that before a few times. But um, yeah, there's the hammock. Straps are in there. And my tarp's on the outside here. I'm not going to risk it because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get rain. So I'm going to fully deploy the tarp. It will take me a little bit of time. It'll be kind of interesting with this platform trying to reach those trees, but we'll get it done. Well, I'm down to my last quarter of this coffee and I haven't hit grounds yet. So. I guess that worked. I wish my luck with the coffee was as good as my luck with the mosquitoes for fluttering around, but surprisingly, none of them have bit me yet. So that either the deets working or I'm really lucky. But hopefully these temets, uh, hopefully these temperatures keep uh, plummeting. And if we once we get down below the 50s, then um, they should start to get sluggish and go away. Hopefully, but I don't know. Under quilt, do that. Love it. There we go. That'll do the trick. Now it's just uh, down to the tarp. I'm just going to put it up real quick and dirty. I can adjust it more when I come back, but I'm hungry. I want to eat, so pull it out real quick, and then let's get back over there and have some food. All right. Mission complete. At least it made it really quick because I, you know, the tent platform is pretty easy to pull out the corners. Now I can tension these really quickly from right here if I want to, just by pulling on this. But it doesn't have to be perfect. It's up. Spot is clean. Nobody here still. And uh, now we're <laughs> after 7:30. I'm still going to bring the pack because it's got all my junk in it. Um, but let's walk back over and have some dinner finally. Let's hope it's still hot. To keep it in my whole food bag, so hopefully that insulated it a bit and slowed things down. All right, Ugh. the sun is going down, you can barely see it through the trees there. But here I am water over there slightly yellowish color if you're wondering why it's because I have the phase one iodine based tablet in there but once I put the second stage in there it'll make it clear again it's not because the water around here is that color water is actually quite nice so this still feels warm which is good and speaking of warm I'm probably gonna put my puffy jacket on soon got it in here for nostalgic reasons. I usually bring my synthetic one, but I brought my 10 year old uh, Montbell down one, which is actually kind of stupid. I should have brought my Outdoor Vital synthetic one because I'm supposed to get rain every day. Um, and that performs a little better in that situation, but this will keep me uh, nice and toasty. <sighs> oh yeah, got my old school jacket on, got an old school meal. And 
little coffee buzz at sunset. That's probably about it for my major things to do um, other than eat this food and hit the hay or the hammock I should say. I don't see a designated fire pit or fire area around here. I don't see anything written about it on the map either. So maybe they don't have one. Um, so I'll probably be skipping that tonight. But that's fine. It'll be dark soon. I'll just get some sleep because tomorrow is going to be uh, definitely more than seven miles, more like 12. And then uh, last day, 14. And eh, I'll wait till the morning when it's light out. I'll show you the map and give you a better idea of what exactly we're doing geographically so mm. I'm like a somewhat warm meal to end the day we'll see what tomorrow brings Two degrees, six thirty ish, and uh, I suppose it's time to get up. I slept good. It did rain for a little bit. I don't know, maybe ten or eleven o'clock. I woke up, just some rain, but it stayed dry under the tarp here. We're all good. Other than, uh, well, still need a haircut, that's for sure. I'm sure that looks great right now. But fear not, I'll get the hat back on. You won't have to look at that for, for much longer. Ah. So, I guess I should get those shoes on. Ooh, man chilly when you get out of those quilts that's for sure gosh didn't bring a knit hat or anything kind of wish I had one all right coffee is sitting hopefully brewing up nicely and this tarp down it's pretty dry I think it only uh, rained for that little bit and now it's good so that will make it packing up easier and uh, it's also nice to have dry gear because it weighs less I actually got a comment from a viewer not too long ago he just picked up one of these Dyneema tarps himself this is like a little five ounce guy um, they make them in all different shapes and sizes but he was interested in my snake skins, which I have here to put it in. But he had heard that to increase the life of the tarp or not damage it, you're not supposed to stuff them into stuff. You're supposed to roll them up. Um, I, I don't know. I had never noticed that uh, stat before. Perhaps it's true, but I always roll mine up anyway. That's the easiest way to get it in the snake skin. And this tarp's like eight years old, so. If you're curious about Dyneema, a lot of people will point out that it's expensive and they don't want to mess it up because it is camping gear. This thing's eight years old and I've been doing exactly what I'm doing and it's cracked. I mean, it's basically just like the day I bought it. So it was a worthwhile investment for me at least. And uh, no, I think one of its claims to fame is that this material, even though it's light, is very strong so so now I'll just uh, get the quilts off hammock down run back over see if this coffee's ready man my hands are cold Ooh, I'm gonna need that coffee the higher summit will go into the clouds and we could see some drizzle or light rain move in. By this evening, the summits will experience rain. Rain could be moderate to heavy at times, 
and we could see a cheeky thunderstorm develop. Pockets of heavy rain and thunderstorm potential. Sorry about that. Pockets of heavy rain and thunderstorms potentially should set up south of the white. All right, so actually, not to kill you with the radio stuff, but he did read the um, full higher summits, and it was different. Thank you, AMC, for the morning weather report. Should probably take this opportunity to look at the map before we head out today, too. So, general area that we're in, Wild River Wilderness. Here's the Rattle River Trail right there to route two we did that road hike so rv was like right there hiked over up rattle river at mount mariah carter mariah trail we passed by and now we're at imp campsite right there so our loop is going to be this over the carters south carter near carter dome which actually Mount Height is the better view. So we're gonna do that, skip Carter Dome. Then Black Angel Trail is right here. That's gonna bring us down in elevation and connect us with Wild River and Wild River Trail. I'm gonna camp around here, or most likely exactly here at the Spruce Brook tent site tonight. That'll be our 10 to 12 miles, whatever it is. And then our 14 out or so is gonna be to head down Wild River over to the Shelburne Trail, over here, and then I can make a decision. Either go back up the ridge and connect back to Rattle River and down, or it's not marked on here, but if I go down here, according to the maps on my phone, there's a way to connect some trails in here to basically it looks like some neighborhood streets that I could bring back out to Route 2 and hit the RV site home base from the other side um, I'll make that decision I don't know that'll save me elevation and doing the same trail again but it may be a little longer in terms of mileage and I have to make sure that it really does connect legally and safely um, to those roads that I saw over here but yeah that's that so enjoy my coffee and, um, and we'll pack up and get on it. Alright, leaving the shelter behind. Back to our spur trail from yesterday intersection. Where we went down to the campsite. Came from up there yesterday. Uh, so, Carter Mariah Trail which is also the Appalachian Trail, as you can see by the white blaze. We're headed southbound towards Black Angel. WIF 711, one storehouse, calling all huts and wake. With your truck trip, wait. I'm starting with eight, Carter. Sounds like they're doing resupplies for the huts. Starting with Carter. We're not going there, but if we kept going on this trail, it would eventually go there. I've stayed around there before, a quarter mile away, because I wasn't paying for the hut. <sighs> Getting some views now, though. Right as I say that, poking up. That's where we came from, over there. Where we're going is over here. Let the stair stepping begin. We are into it now. On our way to Mount Height. Slippery and steep. Definitely up to our highest point of the trip so far. 
as you can see we're above that ridge over there which is what we crested yesterday there's the cliff i pointed out before if we can get that to expose came down hut in there and this morning came out around up down wind around bottom of this thing up this thing and here we are wow you can faintly hear that river flowing from up here pretty cool steady blanket of uh cloud ceiling there and is our potential bad weather of course right soft ground underfoot i don't know how long it's going to last but elevation wise until mount height we're on the ridge now for a bit and it feels pretty good a little peaky view through the trees there cruising along having some proteins some jerky and uh yeah just enjoying the flat ground for a little bit <sighs> nice and calm up here not always like that of course because you can see we're into the crumults the little mini trees basically turn into bonsais because the winds are just too much up here on average let's go towards middle carter there we go all those clouds are just stuck on washington still a faint trace of the auto road winding up there today though those views are not free not for my legs at least Whew. some sort of chaos came through here it's been a bad storm doesn't look too new some of it does interesting tree graveyard there's mount height that's what we're headed towards and drop down the back of it over that way gotta get down to the bottom of it before we go up it not the very bottom but uh, down by zeta pass so let's do it in that lunch because here comes our last big push in terms of elevation of the day not the end of all of it but the big stretches so we're going to leave this behind now you could go directly to carter notch from here and circumvent mount height um but I'm not going to Carter Notch and I'm not trying to circumvent Mount Height, although my legs are asking me to. Um, we could go around it, but we're going to go over it. Get some views before we drop down. Maybe eat some food up there because, like I said, I am burning some calories. Doesn't look like it ever stops, does it? Ah, but it will. I have faith that eventually it will. Clouds on top of where we came from. Let's see what it's like up here. Our best view of Washington yet. Pinkham Notch Visitor Center down there. Madison, Jefferson in there. 
somewhere in those clouds. Let's go up here and see if the, uh, we can get a view of the other side. Oh yeah. Not bad at all. A little breezy and cool up here. But, I might throw my shirt on. Have a little snack action. Recharge. And then we descend. Pick up this Black Angel Trail. If I remember correctly, it's a pretty rugged one. We'll see. That was years ago. Could be better now, could be worse. <sighs> You can see some bands of rain out there too. Coming down right over there. Don't see any over there. Surprisingly, don't see any that I can see coming down on Washington. Looks super dark over there. Maybe a little bit, yeah, coming down over there. So the rain is coming. Forecast said, you know, potential for thunderstorms and whatnot too. I haven't heard anything, but I don't know. Probably wrap up this snack break. Get back down on the trees. Salted cashews and sliced up candy ginger. Not bad. Clouds up above. The threat of rain looming as usual. What? Oh, my spirits are high. All right, another intersection. No mention of Black Angel Trail, but if I continue on the AT for just a tiny bit should be on my left. In fact, I already see something. Black Angel Trail. Wild River Trail. 4.6 miles from now. And we'll camp along that. So about five miles to go for the rest of the day. All right. Leaving behind the Appalachian Trail. It'll be a little less maintained and blazed. Ooh, it's steep on the sides. The first time I did this, it was pouring rain. Maybe. Oh God, eight years ago. Uh, and here we go. Right here. We are entering Wild River Wilderness. Let the adventure begin. This might be a slower five miles than I've been doing previously, even if it is downhill. It's pretty. But it's also <laughs> a little sketchy. What am I supposed to do with this? <sighs> All right. Well, I got some work to do. We'll get there. focused. Feels a little bit like Linville Gorge all over again. And the lack of blazes makes sense, speaking of that. Because you're not allowed to use blazes in a wilderness area. It's federal law. No trail markers of any kind. And no mechanical hand tools to maintain the trail. But... We will get through it, if not for any other reason, but the fact that I need water. 
just drank the last of it up the top of Mount Height, so I am looking forward to getting my water supply back up. Huh. Yeah, I don't think people use this trail too much. That is a down tree and a cliff right there. I guess we go in the middle somehow. Good Lord. There's no way around it. It's all rough up there. All right. starting to mellow out now but that was intense not only has it been a very long time since i've done this trail but i did it going up it last time in the opposite direction coming down it it's like a whole new trail familiar in certain ways but all the obstacles become a bit different i don't know which is worse up or down i think it's just kind of a tough trail in sections overall but at least for now, it's calmer, which is nice. Bonus! We may have a few more miles until we get to the river, but we got water right now. There are several types of irony. I believe this type would be called situational irony. Just started raining. Finally getting hit with the rain. All right. Let's just hope it's a quick little band or a little pocket like we saw from the top up there and not something more sinister. I'm not gonna get the rain gear out yet. We'll see. Ouch. <laughs> Too distracted by rain. It's a beautiful, but also <laughs> slightly brutal at times trail. So the name checked out for this one. But doing pretty good on time. We'll have to see. Now there may be some more rugged spots up here that slow me down, so I should probably not... Finally saw a moose right over there. You probably can't see it. He's staring me down right there. I'm not worried. Okay, it's a female. Still, though, I'm not worried about black bears. Never had an issue with one other than one time, which was weird. But moose, those things will trample you. shame I wanted to see it but it was coming up this trail using it and I just didn't want to get that close to it so I think it's no wait hey buddy you have a good day so like I said um, yeah I know on this wide angle I got you probably couldn't really see that but don't have a lot of experience with moose other than what i've read and um didn't want to get that close but there are a lot of droppings around here very cool yeah i can actually hear it moving over there still so big i mean that wasn't even a big one but it's still the biggest animal I've probably ever seen in the 
woods. It's just so tall. Um, well, anyway, Whew. Moose City. As we leave the moose poo behind, the trees have taken a decided turn towards more deciduous. Just neon green in here as we make our way down to the river. Less rocks and roots. I mean, there's still plenty, but it's not quite as intense. Lots of green, leafy trees. Ooh, it's getting pretty moist and buggy around here. Hopefully, the temp drops again tonight. Because they did go away eventually. I was able to get some respite from them. How it goes tonight? I don't know. I'll just have to wait and see. Wild River Trail. Alright. So, ultimately, we're gonna go this way to get back to um, the RV camp. But we're gonna go a little bit in the opposite direction this way. Oof. Bugs are insane out here. Sorry. Um, we're going to go this way just a little bit. And there should be a campsite. Even though it's not listed on here. Let's see what we find here. And here we have the sign. What's it say? Backcountry camping rules. Alright. Looks like we go up here. Here? Trail kind of peters out. <sighs> and it's up top. Uh, yeah, this must be it. Nice. Two perfect trees right here. Or good enough at least from here to here and uh that works i gotta go down to the water if i can get my pack off and fill up with some stuff for cooking dinner i'm ready for some food oh man I got my chicken teriyaki rice or some sort of chicken stir fry, but I brought a fresh jalapeno that I can slice up and punch that up. So I've been, I've been dreaming about that for a couple of hours now and maybe another cup of coffee and some noodles. <laughs> I'm just going to stuff myself, but yeah, that's the plan. Get a little hammock set up between these trees and some more bug spray on. All right, there she is. All set up, looking pretty good. I can dig it, got a nice spot. I'm ready for the rain. But these bugs are relentless and they seem to be up here a lot more than down by the water. Plus it's more open down there and that's where the, um, apparently the fire pit for this campsite is. So, I'm headed back down there. It's not too bad of a walk. I'm going to just bring my pack so I don't have to decide what to bring. Maybe make a little fire, get some smoke going to get rid of these bugs. All right. This will be my living room. I'll do my cooking and whatnot down here.
sticks. Got some, some small stuff to get me started. Should be enough for a little bit. And honestly, um, I'm realizing now I might get <laughs> a rain cancellation. But I'm going to hang out here as long as I can. Hope for the best. Get some smoke going. Coffee. Oh boy, it's boiling. It'll be a strong brew. But that flame will go out soon. And I'll let that sit and do my tap routine. Got my chicken fried rice. And one whole jalapeno with some crushed red peppers just to punch it up some more because I'm in the mood for some spice. I got my cutting board. My chef's knife. Let's do some rudimentary slices here. There's in there. There we go. Now I just add a little boiling water to that. And I got some spicy chicken fried rice. And my coffee should be done soon too. And the fire? Going good. Just give me enough time to do this before the rain hits. <sighs> Not a bad day. Not bad at all. Alright, well, you knew it had to happen. Me and the fire got rained on <laughs> shortly thereafter. But it's okay. I got dinner rehydrating. You got a chance to see that minus me going, oh my God, this is the best thing I ever ate because it's a hot meal in the woods. You already saw me drink coffee, but I can tell you, I got it right here. And I'm gonna sit in this hammock and enjoy that and then eat my meal afterwards. It's all good. All good. I got my hammock. I got my coffee. <laughs> got a little disorganized, but... <sighs> I'm going to sit under here, listen to raindrops. Have a cup of joe. <sighs> Get some calories. And hey, tomorrow's a new day. I'm sure it won't rain then. Maybe it will. But I'll take it from there. Oh, and I didn't tell you, I alluded to something a little weird about this campsite, which I'll be thinking about tonight. But it's a bit of a bummer, so maybe I'll tell you in the morning. We'll just leave today on a positive note. Raindrops, coffee, and chicken fried jalapeno rice. Nothing like waking up to rain. Thankfully, I think it's just down to the drips off the trees now, but it was coming down pretty good last night. In fact, I was actually wondering what kind of insect was burrowing into the ground around my tent here, or tarp rather, but it's actually Just holes burrowed in the ground from the dripping of my tarp. I'm just gonna pack up the hammock here, get the straps down, the quilts off, and um, shove it all in my bag, leave the tarp for last, just pack up unceremoniously, and uh, we'll get on the trail and see how we wanna approach today. <sighs> Today we'll start with scattered rain showers and drizzle as an area of low pressure passes and slides southeast. Lingering clouds on and above the summit, as well as a few pockets of drizzle or isolated showers. <sighs> All right, sun is out. Camp is packed up, and the bugs still going. Maybe they'll thin out as we hike out of here. Nice campsite though, 
I actually found another site up there. So there's at least three platforms or, you know, tent areas up here. The bummer part that I was kind of alluding to <coughs> last night. This is the spruce pine campsite. When I Googled this, I just did spruce pine. I'm, I think I just did spruce pine shelter or campsite. There used to be a shelter here years ago from what I've read. But anyway, the first thing that popped up, I was just trying to find maybe some pictures of it or something like that. But the first thing that popped up were some news articles. And uh, unfortunately, last May, uh, there was another hammock camper that was reported missing. And uh, by his wife, I think he was 50 something. And rangers, search and rescue, whatever department it was, went out, started looking around, came to this trailhead and found him here from what they can surmise. He uh, hooked up his hammock at night to a dead or dying tree. And um, he had his headlamp on when they found him. So they surmised that he sat up at night, sat down, and it came down on him. It was a pretty big one. So that is a little creepy. I definitely did not come here on purpose. In fact, I when I read that, I was looking for ways to avoid it. But um, I ended up here anyway. I only bring that up because, and this is not me trying to attach myself to tragedy, but I, but I read that article and started thinking there are times that I've set up at night and maybe even one or two videos where I kind of mentioned, hey, don't do what I did. That was stupid. This tree doesn't look so good. Um, but now I take that even more seriously. So. If you're a hammock camper, maybe get something out of that story. Take a look at what you're hanging from. And this is not to make anybody scared of hammock camping. You find a good solid tree and you're perfect. But, you know, it's rare, but it's possible. If you hook up to a dead tree, you're tired, the end of the night, whatever the case may be. Um, that can end badly. So, sorry to be a downer first thing in the morning, but kind of a sad story, but also a little bit of a PSA. Um, I've only read of that happening to hammock campers a very small number of times, but it's preventable in most cases. So, something to think about. All right, let's get back to an upbeat here. Uh, down to the river past my poor campfire that got rained out last night. Next we're gonna go over here, take a quick look at the river and then we're gonna backtrack out. Yep. Skies look pretty clear. A little bit of fluffiness up there, but nothing too bad. I think we just might possibly make it out of here without getting rained on again, but we'll see. All right. Got a liter of water. We are back on our way. Just hoping that those skies hold out and we don't get rained on again. Of course, as you heard on that weather report from the AMC this morning, there are still some possibilities of some rain here and there. And also, a little fun fact for any fellow scanner nerds out there that also happen to hike the White Mountains, I really just brought these frequencies along for a little bit of fun. What I didn't realize was it was going to help me as much as it did this morning because I usually use it just as a weather band radio and um, none, there was no weather band transmission receivable in this area um, from the National Weather Service via radio and no cell phone service. But 
I was still able to get AMC and I knew from yesterday that they broadcast at 7 so I was still able to get weather so just a little pro tip if you're somebody who already is into scanners and whatnot that can help you and this isn't even actually a scanner I have a real scanner at home this is just a little $25 programmable radio only does like 127 channels and slowly scans them but if you're just gonna throw 20 channels in for a local area like this totally works um, and if you lose it it's not the end of the world so that worked out well thank you whoever that was on the AMC that read me off the report today it has given me the confidence that I'll probably get out of here without getting soaked and certainly without thunder and lightning turned out to be a nice morning All right, back to the intersection, our old friend, Black Angel Trail, over there. I'm thinking of taking this high water trail right here. It runs parallel to the Wild River Trail, which after it ends, I'd have to cross the river again to get back on the high water trail. Anyway, I've heard not so great things about high water trail because Hurricane Irene damage messed up both of these trails significantly, but this one uh, seems to have been not only pretty damaged, but never really rerouted or recovered very well. So we're probably going to encounter some washouts and whatnot, but let's just go for it. Nothing compared to the Black Forest Trail though yesterday so far. <laughs> the little down tree won't stop me. And look, that's where the bridge used to be. But it is no longer existent so that is another complication of going over to black forest trail and back again I'm kind of enjoying my dry feet so i'm going to stick with that and see what adventure is ahead here on high water we're going to do 14 miles today i'm already dreaming of dinner and i have to be honest okay i always end these hikes 90 percent of the time with a cheeseburger it's just my tradition but i can't lie we already did the barbecue thing. I don't have any hamburger materials at the RV. I do have some chicken, some simmer sauce, and some basmati rice. So we might switch it up and might be tikka masala time instead of cheeseburger time at the end of this one. It's a minor tributary, but we do have to cross it to stay on high water. So I guess the feet are getting wet after all. Not even going to bother worrying about it. Just going to focus on not slipping. The feet are probably going to get wet today anyway, so let's just get it over with now. Woo. That is cold. <sighs> Besides, my feet could use a bath. <laughs> probably not the worst thing in the world for me right now. Beginning a hiking day. Got plenty of miles to dry these out. Pretty rugged on this trail so far. It is actually doing a series of up and downs as we come down to these minor tributaries. So that's how I'm gonna end up still getting a lot of elevation gain today, I suppose. And over here, you can see through the trees, one of the giant washouts over there. I'm heating up. I wanna take off this shirt, but these bugs are eating me alive today. I ran out of my bug spray because I've been using it quite a bit and it was doing an admirable job but now that I've run out and I've sweated off what I was wearing probably um, I'm starting to get a lot of bites pop up unfortunately I don't know if this was the right choice or not then we might have to take this shirt off give in to the box then where's the trail I am really embarrassed to admit this I want to say it's a first for me, at least to this egregious degree, but this really goes to show you how kind of repetitive the up and downness of, of this trail is and the surroundings for right now. I just got lost at the top of a hill, not seriously lost, but lost the trail, was turned around looking for the trail for a bit. And then, man, thank God, 
my podcast that I was listening to ran out, so I grabbed my phone to pull it up, and it was on my map software. I actually just came down. I'm going the opposite direction and didn't even realize it. I went up and came down, did this water crossing twice. <laughs> Must have done it two different ways. It didn't even dawn on me. That's super embarrassing. Okay. I only wasted like, I mean, less than an eighth of a mile, but it's just, that's a weird feeling because I had no conception. It's just up, down, water cross, up, down, water cross. Neon trees, neon trees, repeat. Whew. Two water crossings I did without realizing I did it twice. Oh, and a big old ridge. Okay. All right. I've actually, once I redo this, made it pretty far up, like way above the actual wild river. <sighs> so, see if I can manage to not get lost again. A little break in the trees here. In fact, we can get a view of Wild River. And there it is. It's the larger one. And Mariah Brook feeding into it right there. It's nice to get a little view. But I should keep on moving. It is 1010. So this is that critical part of the day where I always feel like I'm making great time. And then next thing I know it's two o'clock and I'm like, what happened? Overconfidence. <laughs> That's what happened. Didn't get the feet wet on that one. <sighs> Leaving the wilderness. And look, sure enough, now there's a yellow blaze. So this is a tertiary or connector trail. Wow, I guess this is the washed out sections I was reading about. Oh, this is a little sketch. Actually, I was just about to say that I was contemplating fording this, backtracking, fording the river again, taking the Wild River Campground Road around this. But as I'm talking to you guys, there is a piece of tape in there. Right there. Um, it looks like the trail was there, but it's water now. I was thinking I had to walk on those boulders, but it's like I just have to get through here and push through this stuff. I can officially say that having you along with me ah, saved me because I was about to give up if I hadn't pointed down here. Ah, all right. From what I've read, it gets a little dicey like this several times, so just have to stick with it. It's not really a trail anymore. I think it's going to remain that way until we get to Shelburne in a mile or two. But, persevere. This trail has a couple legitimately dangerous spots where it wouldn't take a whole lot to fall straight down a good amount of feet. It's almost, uh, I'm surprised. <laughs> I mean, Black Forest was like challenging, but this had like two spots so far where I was like, oh yeah, that would be really bad. Oh. 
Come on, Shelburne Trail. Whew. Oh, thank goodness. The end of the high water trail. Now we're on to the Shelburne. If you're new to hiking, probably wouldn't recommend the high water trail for navigation reasons. Anyway, we're on a nice, easy to follow trail now. Although being easier to follow, we do still have about a thousand feet of elevation gain to do as we do a partial climb back up the Carter Mariah range and then we'll peel off on our side adventure to hopefully get back to civilization in one piece. And here's our intersection. This will eventually get to the Rattle River Trail that we took in in 2.7 miles via the Kendaskeg Trail. We're going to circumvent that, take the Shelbourne Trail that will parallel the Rattle River Trail for a bit, then give me a second opportunity to reconnect it at a lower elevation so I'm avoiding going up on the ridge and uh, cut off a little bit of suffering for the legs we'll see the spiders on this trail are insane even with a stick i'm getting hit in the face near constantly by webs spiders themselves and of course whatever they uh caught on their net that ends up on me afterwards in addition to the mosquitoes i will say i thought that the challenge was behind me but I'm not exaggerating. I really am smacking bugs off me right now. Um, this is more psychologically challenging than anything else I've done today. That's for sure. It's just ever since I dropped down at elevation, super buggy. But hopefully we get to the next phase soon and maybe it'll be a less spider and mosquito intense area. Well, the Shelburne Trail has turned into an old forest road of sorts. And according to my map, I hope I didn't screw up, but the quote-unquote trail that I planned on using to circumvent the ridge, which I'm now noticing on my map software has no name, is supposedly back here, and I've seen no trace of trail. So, let me take a look. Now, it's apparently located right at this trail. Well, or I should say it says it's here, and it looks like a faint path through there, although I don't see much usage right here. This could be interesting. It looks like a short ways, and then it gets to another supposed road, which is might be a forest road. But I'm too deep in now. I might be in a little bit of a pickle because it was some steep downhill on Shelburne back when it actually looked like a trail. There's no way I'm going back up that and the ridge. I'll be in some trouble. It is, I don't even know how, wow. It's 2.30 going on three, it's after 2.30. At least this is a little open, so I'm gonna follow it in the general direction of this quote unquote road I'm looking for. Look, if you were gonna do this and park at the Rattle River uh, Trail, you obviously wouldn't do this. You would have to just go. I would say most likely go up on that ridge and do it the proper way. But for me, it seemed like this was going to make sense due to the location of the RV park. But too far in to turn back now. Okay, that was an option, but no. Harry Mofos, great, okay. Looks like I can still do this direction. That, uh, it's spinning out a little bit, but I don't think I've ever gotten that many mosquito bites in that amount of time or in one day ever, as I just did on that three quarters of a mile of trail. 
it is insane. If I wave my arms, they just hit mosquitoes constantly. It's pretty gross. I just have to constantly rub my arms as I'm walking. It's okay, staying positive. I'm gonna go up here and find a way to just get out of this area as fast as possible. It's not like it's very scenic anyway, and I'm being eaten alive. <sighs> just hope something good and opportunity-wise is ahead. I thought there was a road down there that I could do a water crossing to, but I don't know. Turned out to be nothing there. <sighs> Ironically, I'm on some other snow snowmobile path. It brings me to Rattle River Trail. Ooh, sorry, I'm flustered. Luckily, it brings me pretty close to the base. I think it's that one that we saw in the very beginning of the video that said no hunting or fishing, but it seemed like you could hike through it. There's no signs on this side, so I did see signs that I'm outside the park boundary, but nothing saying I couldn't come in. I'm sweating like crazy. There's lesser of two evils. I had to put a long sleeve shirt on. Plus my whole body's gonna be one giant bite. But this is it. Two miles on this. We'll be out of here. I just hope it dries up. It's just so wet down in there. And it's just a breeding field. Ironically, I'm backtracking kind of in the same direction I just walked through. But, at least I know this goes to the trail. I'll be happy to see that. Made it to the intersection. I guess I was confused. That posted area is not where I came from. I actually came from right there. And that's where we split off. I'm back to the main trail. While I typically don't really enjoy road hikes, in this case, I'm looking forward to some, <laughs> some wind and some moving air. So, bring on the road. Oh, made it. I don't even know what to say. Staying positive here. The first two and a half days of these last three days were amazing. The last half of today was some of the most unenjoyable, toughest hiking I've ever done. I've never had a bug situation like that where you, I just feel like I, could, I couldn't stop for the last three miles. And I'm wearing long sleeves, but anytime I'd stop, they would literally cover my face. There's still some around me now. It doesn't even bother me compared to what was going on back there in those marshy areas. Anyway, I'm out now. I'm back to the road. I'm going to call this mission complete. If you do this trip yourself, look, in the video notes, I'll put the way that you probably, that you should have done this trail. So you avoid all that crap that I just did. Um, but I'll also show what I did in the notes as well. But keep that in mind. Carter Mariah range loop, if done without that last piece, gets a thumbs up from me. Right now I'm very hungry. I'm gonna replace some calories. Uh, my wife should be off work soon. So until next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now it's cheeseburger time. Oh, right. Right now it's tikka masala time. This video was sponsored by Upstart. Go to upstart.com slash syntax and find out how low of a rate you can get today. today.